Hello guys, this is Al from Open Source Channel. Welcome to a new episode. Today is going to be a little bit different. Today I'm going to narrate something I done a few days ago and it, it wasn't going to be a tutorial really, but what I done, I installed Micro 8S on my Proxmox, installing Kubernetes. And today I'm going to show you how I done it and I'm going to narrate it on top of the actual video. So I hope you enjoy it. As usual, you can find all the information in the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, let's go and start. And as you can see, I'm already on my creators website of Can Canonical. This is Ubuntu. And I'm going to install, as you can see here, you, you got different options, but I'm going to install it on Linux. I'm going to use Ubuntu, as I said, and I'm going to use the latest one that is available on the Proxmox uh, VM. And I, I'm going to use a container. I'm also going to use my terminal here so you can actually follow along as I am doing it. Again, this is not while I'm doing it, but I just, you know, just going to narrate it. It's very simple. I'm going through the entire list you can see on screen on the canonical website. So all you got to do is just follow along. All right. Now, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to have a look at the actual version of uh, Ubuntu. So to know if you don't know how to do it, here you go, all the information lsp underscore release dash a and you got the version and again i'm using 20.04 okay just for let you know which one and again i'm using the version that has been uh, mentioned in the article on the canonical website and as, as i said before guys i'm using proxmox i already got uh, vm installed and again watch some other my videos on how to install containers and vms on uh, proxmox now here i'm going to show you a little bit how i do it again you can just uh, type a name I'm, as i said this is a vm now what i'm doing is i'm creating a snapshot here because i wanted to make sure that any problem i can go back i don't want to install the vm so this is the best thing i'm going to do create always a, a snapshot if you're using proxmox in the way i'm doing it once this is finished, I'm going to start the update of the Ubuntu. I want to make sure everything is up to date. While I am narrating this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do some cat of the video. I want to try to short it. At the moment, the entire video is about 24 minutes. I want to try to make it around 15 to 16 minutes. Anyway, we got the snapshot here, as you can see. And now let's go back here. And this is what we're going to install it. Now, you know, I already do, done um, an up-to-date you know, up, what I've done is you type apt, update, and then upgrade if you have to. The first thing I'm going to do, use a snap. Now, if you don't have a snap, you need to install snap. But if you use the VM version, the full version of Ubuntu server, snap is already being installed for you. And I p believe you should use that one because that's the easy way. You don't have to mess it up with snap or anything else. It shouldn't really take that long and we should be ready to go. Now, this micro K8 8s is already being built by canonical to build up with kubernetes all right so it's not something that you actually um you, you can actually install it if you want you can actually download the iso if you really wanted it but i wanted to make you know a different way i wanted to install it myself i wanted to make sure i i know how to install it i mean sometimes you've got to learn it, you don't know everything so you know, you you got to learn it. The only way to learn it is if you do it things yourself rather than, you know, get it downloaded already made. As you can see, I'm having not issues with uh, the, with RAM. So I'm going to change the RAM of the VM uh, from, I got two gigabyte. I'm going to write, uh, I think I wrote four gigabyte. Well, I ran four, four gigabytes. So at 4,000 I wrote. So we got three point something, 3.9 gigabyte of ram so that next time i start up again the uh, vm it should have four gigabytes all right for now for the installation two gig is plenty here we go that first part is being done as you can see it's been already created permission has been denied i think i didn't put sudo again i am logged in as you can see as hal not as a root so i'm going to put sudo in the beginning of the uh, the line there and let's have a look at the status so it's still doing it you know the, the is running but you need to wait a little bit longer it is sometimes it does take a little bit of time okay so it did take uh, even though you see it i think i post the video for that moment but it did take 
a little bit too well. It wasn't that, that short, you know, that, that fast. Anyway, I'm going to reboot the VM. Again, I got to do sudo. And now as rebooted. Okay. I usually work with root so sometimes i forget to put sudo sometimes i put sudo i should start to put sudo doesn't matter even if even if i'm working on you know in root but sometimes i don't so anyway let's have a look and see if he actually boots up again and then we go back to the terminal to continue the installation all right so we're back in in the ssh session now what i'm going to do I'm going to enable some of the services that I want. One of the services I want, of course, is going to be the dashboard. Of course, you can actually type uh, microates enable dash dash help and you might get the actual list of all the services. You can go online and have a look also the um, the services. So you could do either way. All right. What I'm going to do, I'm going to turn on again the uh, at least the dashboard so I can actually show you what I'm talking about. So let's have a look at the actual status. Here we got some of the enabled services. And as you can see, we also got the disabled one. Now, one of one is the dashboard, who is again disabled. And we're going to enable that with the actual command, as you can see here. So we got the dashboard, DNS, registry, and TS also, or TSTTO, all right? So I'm going to write again sudo. I won't forget this time. And I'm going to, okay, let me up, uh, look here. Let me go again. And I paste it here. So as you can see now, these services are going to be enabled and I will be able to access the dashboard. Of course, before you can actually access the dashboard, you need uh, a key. I'm going to also show you how you get those keys and what to write in the command line to get all the information you need to log in right so the command has been successful again don't forget you can actually look at all the commands and all the information again everything is in the description below this is the command this is the actual page of all the configurations and everything you need to to know on how to access the actual dashboard okay that's the actual config here uh we don't have to yeah i gotta put down uh, sudo again there we go we got the token there as well and we got the certificate on top so this is the actual ip that i need to access the dashboard so let's go back to the browser i'm going to paste and go advanced and i'm going to proceed and as you can see we got part of the api that is working properly so the dashboard is on a different port um yes this is the actual api and everything works correctly this is the actual of course for different installation you will get different uh, results on that so we got the token there now let's go and have a look which port and which ip the actual dashboard has been installed to so i'm going to run a command um to understand what has been installed on the Kubernetes, okay? Let's go back here and let's go log in again. You might tell me there's different certificate. I had to get log out because logically I changed the permission for the user. There was no permission for the user, uh, user HAL, but only for the root. So I just added. So let's go sudo micro k8s space config. Now we got that back again. Now I should be able, as you can see, without sudo. All right, so that works okay. So let me go back here. Now, I think the next step I done just went and enabled the, um, I started using the Kubernetes. So you you need to start the the, the, the the services. And here you actually have the list of IP and ports that the services are running on, all right? The one we need is the one with dashboards. And it's uh, 10, 1, 5, 2, 1, 8, 3, 1, 2, 2. Again, that will translate to a different port for what we actually, you know, um, have it. And to do that, you need to run the proxy. So we're going to change that to a different proxy. So you will have a different port. So you can actually access the dashboard using the local uh, IP with the actual ports. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Right, so as I said earlier on, we need the port, so we need to understand where the actual dashboard is 
you know, where the actual dashboard is possible to to access to. So we need to run the dashboard proxy. So that will translate the IP to a local IP using a port. As a, you know, and you can do this with this line, micro 8s dashboard dash proxy. So that will translate for us to a local IP. Let me go and let me paste that and let me run it. There we go. Let's uh, press enter. And as you can see, we got 127001 and the port. So we're going to use the local IP of the actual machine. And we're going to use the long, as you can see here, the, the token, as you can see below here, to actually access the actual website. So let's go back here. Let's change the actual port. And as you can see, 10443. I'm going to log in there by pressing that. Um, I got the actual uh, token. I don't have the config. There we go. Let me copy the code here, the long code. Let me copy that. Control C, I think. I will need to change the configuration of this app uh, accessing because at the moment I got problem copying. Whatever I copy, it just, just go out of the window so it doesn't copy properly. So anyway, I just paste that as you can see there. I'm going to click X on it and I got access to the Kubernetes dashboard of the micro K8S. So as you can see, so simple to install, very fast and this is for development. So if you want to, you know, start to understand, learn how to use Kubernetes, this is a very well easy way to do it. Okay. And as you can see, some of the containers that are running, uh, you can set up replicas, you can do a lot of things here. And again, you can set up more um, containers if you want to. There are many things you can actually do here. There are config of the storage. Again, you can actually add more storage, more users. And it's like kind of a portainer, but again, you can actually install Docker and portainers as well. And through portainer, you can actually um, orchestrate Kubernetes as well. I might do a video on this as well. This is just something for me to try. I was doing, trying to do a, a tutorial, really, to be honest. This is what I said. I'm going to um, kind of narrated this, this installation because this was not meant to be a tutorial at all. But anyway, You've seen how easy it is to install it. The install, uh, the actual video goes a little bit further, really, but I'm going to cut it here. So I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below if you actually want to see more about this um, Micro 8, uh, Micro K8S. And I'm going to go a little bit more further. I'm going to install Docker. I'm going to install Portainer and see how we can actually orchestrate everything using Portainer. So, guys. All right, thank you so much for joining me for this small, well, uh, narrated tutorial or whatever you want to call it. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you do leave a message below. Again, guys, let me know what you like, what you don't like, what you'd like to see. If there's any problem, let me know because I want to make the video that you really want to watch. It's not something I want to watch. It's you are the one who is going to watch it. So let me know what you like, what you don't like so I can actually improve it on my videos. Thank you again guys and I'll see you next time.